Mina, Con Bonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This is Judges chapter 19, and the story I'm going to read you is pretty cruel, pretty bad. I'm not going to do a lot of speaking outside of the Bible itself. Just know that the story starts out nice with the man's concubine leaving him, playing the harlot on him. He goes to her father's house to bring him, her back unto himself. Seems to be a very merciful... Um, Maybe even a nice guy, um, obviously a forgiving one, but that's about the only refrain that we get from uh, all of the, I'm sorry, um, the only reprieve we have from all the horrors in the last few chapters up to this point. Now, let's hit the darkest spot. We're going to start at verse 11. So he, his concubine, and his servant. Verse 11, they were near Jebus, and the day was far spent, and the servant said to his master, Come, please and let us turn aside into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. But his master said to him, We will not turn aside here into a city of foreigners, who are not of the children of Israel. We will go on to Gibeah. So he said to his servant, Come, let us draw near to one of these places, and spend the night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed by and went their way. And the sun went down on them near Gibeah, which belongs to Benjamin. They turned aside there to go in to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat down in the open square of the city, for no one would take them into his house to spend the night. Just then an old man came in from his work in the field at evening, who also was from the mountains of Gibeah, or I'm sorry, of Ephraim. He was staying in Gibeah, whereas the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he raised his eyes, he saw the traveler in the open square of the city, and the old man said, Where are you going, and where do you come from? So he said to him, We are passing from Bethlehem in Judah toward the remote mountains of Ephraim. I am from there. I went to Bethlehem in Judah. Now I am going to the house of the Lord. But there is no one who will take me into his house, although we have both straw and fodder for our donkeys, and bread and wine for myself, for your female servant, and for the young man who is with your servant. There is no lack of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with you. However, let all your needs be my responsibility. Only do not spend the night in the open square. So he brought him into his house, and gave fodder to the donkeys, and they washed their feet, and ate and drank. As they were enjoying themselves, suddenly certain men of the city, perverted men, literally, from the Hebrew, sons of Belial, surrounded the house and beat on the door. They spoke to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring out the man who came to your house, that we may know him carnally. But the man, the master of the house, went out to them and said to them, No, my brethren, I beg you, do not act so wickedly. Seeing this man has come into my house, do not commit this outrage. Look, here is my virgin daughter and the man's concubine. Let me bring them out now. Humble them and do with them as you please. But to this man do not do such a vile thing. But the men would not heed him. So the man took his concubine and brought her out to them. And they knew her and abused her all night until morning. And when the day began to break, they let her go. By the way, um, and they knew her. That's biblical for they had sex with her, in case anyone did not know. Then the woman came as the day was dawning, and fell down at the door of the man's house where her master was till it was light. When her master arose in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way, there was his concubine fallen at the, at the door of the house with her hands on the threshold. And he said to her, Get up, and let us be going. But there was no answer. So the man lifted her onto the donkey, and the man got up and went to his place. I'm going to stop there for now. This story pretty much resembles Sodom and Gomorrah. That's how far the Israelites fell down. And that's how far away they were from the Lord. Um, if anything, if anyone's wondering why the Lord decided to punish the children of Israel, um, in between judges... For this kind of level of disobedience, we're going to see in the next chapter how even the degenerate Israelites at that point took this particular matter seriously because of what this man chose to do with his concubine. And of course, uh, letting his concubine go through something like that, his wanting to get her back and the mercy and kindness he may have had is put into serious question considering what he was willing to let her experience at the hands of those men. So the Bible definitely has some pretty horrible stories in it. The hope, the hope is there, but there's a lot of darkness as well, and the Bible doesn't attempt to cover it up. 
or ignore it. It shines the light right down on those horrible deeds. So we'll get into uh, how things are remedied, at least how the Israelites thought they should be remedied next time we speak. Thank you very much for watching. I love you, and God bless.